Prophagonax Maximus, also known as Allosaurus Maximus depending on who you ask, was a large carnivorous theropod dinosaur of the late Jurassic period. The original discovery and naming of this gigantic theropod was pretty chaotic to say the least. Back during what's now known today as the Big Sad, one of the men who discovered the fossils, John Willis Stovall, wanted help from experts to unearth the fossils. So he turned to the Works Progress Administration, however due to a policy they had saying the workers have to be from the same county as the workplace itself, they couldn't get anyone to help him. Meaning that rather than fossil experts unearthing the fossils, it was done by farmers between 1931 and 1932 in Oklahoma. Now the problem here is that these were simple townsfolk who didn't really know anything about digging up fossils. This led to numerous fossils being unintentionally destroyed whilst being unearthed and some stuff they thought were fossils were not actually fossils. Despite not really knowing anything about this sort of work, the farmers did manage to excavate some fossils without causing too much damage or accidentally destroying them. What is considered the first publication of the animal was a newspaper article by Grace Ray in 1941 and the name given by Stovall was Saurophagus Maximus. Saurophagus meaning eater of lizards and Maximus Latin for largest. So the full name means the largest eater of lizards. However, the article is or was considered a nodum nudum or naked name due to the article by Grace Ray not containing a scientific description of the animal's remnants. Stovall later gave an official description of Saurophagus maximus in 1950, but there ended up being further complications. You see, completely unknown to Stovall at the time was that the name Zorophagus was already in use with a tyrant flycatcher bird, which eats lizards. In 1995, Daniel Kaur cleared things up with a paper that renamed it to Zorophagonax Maximus, which instead means largest lord of the lizard eaters because I guess we always go give these animals some powerful sounding name. Anyway, this came with some complications in up itself, with some paleontologists claiming it is not in fact a new species of large carnivorous theropod, but actually Allosaurus, meaning it should be renamed to Allosaurus Maximus, which translates to largest of different lizards because I guess Saurophagus slash Saurophagonax slash Allosaurus Maximus can't just be left alone. What is happening? Why are you doing this to me? From what I know, most experts continue to call it Saurophagonax, and there has been some differences found between Allosaurus and Saurophagonax. However, we'll have to wait and see, since Saurophagonax is known from fragmentary remains from Oklahoma, and possibly some from New Mexico. Also due to the fragmentary nature of Saurophagonax, most of the skeletons of Saurophagonax you see in museums actually use scaled up casts of Allosaurus bones in case you're wondering. I didn't really know where to put this fact so I thought I'd just throw it in here. I'll leave a link in the description to a video that has a section going over the differences so far between the two for your own pleasure, but to summarize it the vertebrae are different on Saurophagonax, and the chevrons, which are these little bone things underneath the tail vertebrae, are also different. Anyway, throughout the rest of this video, I'll call the dinosaur Saurophagonax, since that's what most scientists call it at the moment. As you might have guessed from the name Largest Lord of Lizard Eaters, Saurophagonax was a massive animal. Older estimates put the animal at a massive 14 to 15 meters, or about 46 or 50 feet. However, newer estimates are as conservative as Ron DeSantis, putting Saurophagonax at somewhere between 35 and 40 feet, or 10 and 12 meters, with one thing that came across saying possibly 13 meters, or about 43 feet, which isn't much of a difference really. Anyway, at that length, that makes it comparable to Tyrannosaurus rex and Carcharodontosaurus like Mapusaurus and Acrocanthosaurus in length. However, it doesn't really match them in weight, only being about 4 or 5 metric tons total. 
The largest number I saw said 7.5 metric tons, however that's a little ludicrous in my opinion. This most likely came from older estimates of the length I'm guessing. Either way, 4 or 5 metric tons makes it comparable in size to Torvosaurus, another large carnivorous dinosaur it lived with, and alongside that it also lived alongside Allosaurus. Allosaurus was much smaller at about 28 feet and a little more than 2 metric tons meaning that Saurophaganax is twice its size when talking about weight. One theory proposed about Saurophaganax when it comes to its size is that it would have been too slow to actually chase off the prey, so it would have scavenged. This is kinda shown in 2013's Planet Dinosaur, where it uses its larger size to steal food from an Allosaurus fragilis. However, as I pointed out in my Tyrannosaurus video, being a dedicated predator or dedicated scavenger is the definition of stupidity. And to use the same example again, Wedgetail Eagles, the apex predator of Australian skies, both scavengers and hunts. And just like with the talk about how Tyrannosaurus was a scavenger because it's slow, the truth is that you only need to be fast enough to catch whatever's in your ecosystem that you're designed to take down. A lot of large sauropods, such as Apatosaurus and Brachiosaurus, lived in the Morrison Formation, which is where Saurophaganax was found, meaning that it could just eat juveniles of those animals or wounded adults. And on top of that, from what I know, Stegosaurus, another dinosaur from the Morrison Formation, wasn't that fast either, so it could also try and go for one of those as long as it stays out of range of its phagomizers. Really, when it comes to scavenging versus hunting, nature isn't as black and white as we think it is, meaning Saurophaganax would have both scavenged and hunted animals, and the same can also be said for all predators. Also, another thing I want to bring up really quickly is that hatchet head theory about Allosaurus. I thought I'd bring it up since some of you might be thinking this also applies to Saurophaganax because of the Allosaurus slash Saurophaganax Maximus debate. And on top of that, I'm kind of getting sick of doing videos on large theropods, so an Allosaurus video will have to wait, so might as well bring it up now. For those who haven't heard about the theory, According to the book version of Planet Dinosaur I have, one study found that Allosaurus has a very weak bite force, roughly 440 psi, which is even weaker than a lion's, which is 650, and was more comparable to a snow leopard whose bite force is 450, and a leopard which is 300 to 500. But, surprisingly, they found the skull could take an impact up to 6 metric tons before breaking, and they believed this meant it would just slam its skull into prey in a hatchet-like attack style. However, this doesn't really work. As FossilGuy.com pointed out, since the teeth of Allosaurus are much smaller when compared to other carnivores, the animal would have most likely lost teeth with each attack, and wouldn't be able to replace them fast enough, meaning after several hatchet-like attacks it would have been left toothless, like heroin addicts in Melbourne. One argument for the hatchet attack style theory, again pointed out by fossilguy.com, is that a study in 2015 found it had a maximum jaw gape of 92 degrees, but that's the maximum, not the optimal which is closer to 32 and a half degrees, meaning the jaw would have gone in the way of this attack style. Everyone mainly focuses on the maximum because it sounds cooler and helps push the idea of the hatchet theory. Overall, it's believed the animal wouldn't have done this and most likely would have done something similar to falcons with what's known as a strike and tear method. Getting back to Saurophaganax, in terms of media appearances, Saurophaganax has appeared in Planet Dinosaur, as mentioned earlier, where it's shown stealing an Allosaurus's kill, and it also appears in a few episodes of Dinosaur King, and in the park building game Prehistoric Planet. In Prehistoric Planet, it's listed as being an Allosaurus subspecies, but I'll leave it up to you to debate about it yourselves. In Dinosaur King, it's the only dinosaur in the show that has defeated all six main dinosaurs, with the only dinosaur that came close being Pherizinosaurus, who exhausted one and defeated the other five. 
Saurophaganax is also one of the only dinosaurs that appears in the area its fossils were found, and it's also one of the only dinosaurs that is confused with another dinosaur when the main characters first encounter it. It's obvious who it was confused with. This also brings up an interesting point someone made about the show in the video I'll show up on screen, which will be in the description for your viewing pleasure. You see, in Dinosaur King, you have these different elements each dinosaur is attached to, and each of these elements follows certain trends with the dinosaurs the creators associated with those elements. Just as an example, Spinosaurids, such as Baryonyx and Spinosaurus itself, are in the water element, whilst Ceratopsians like Triceratops and Taurosaurus are in the lightning element. Meanwhile with the fire element, you have Tyrannosaurids and Carcharodontosaurids, such as Tyrannosaurus, Acrocanthosaurus, and Mapusaurus. Meaning that if going off of my dinosaur videos so far, if I was in Dinosaur King, I'd probably have a fire dinosaur as mine. Jokes aside, another dinosaur in the fire element is Saurophaganax, meaning that since it's in Allosauridae, which is with Carcharodontosauridae in Allosauroidea, Allosaurus should be in the fire element, not the wind element. If you were to ask me why this is the case, I'd say that due to the build of Allosaurus, they thought it belonged more in the wind element, since the wind dinosaurs are meant to be these faster, more lightly built animals, whilst fire element dinosaurs are slower and harder hitting. Hence why Allosaurus isn't a fire dinosaur. Anyway, that's that. Hopefully you learnt something and subscribed. My future projects will be the options on this poll from most voted for to least voted for, so you can probably guess what's next.